So the second agency that we'll talk about is the, uh, another state agency, the state of California Department of General Services. And they process the small, and they also have a micro business um, certification. And then they also process that disadvantaged, uh, or disadvantaged, disabled veteran business um, enterprise certification. So both of these actually require you to first register with the state. So you register and you create a profile, and then once you have that profile, it, you can access their certification module. It's all online. They're both all very smooth. Um, so I know you mentioned, uh, sir, that you got this, the CVE certification. This, the, the DVBE will be a lot easier. <laughs> so it's, it's really, they did a great, the state did a great job with putting their certifications online a really long time ago, actually. I've, I've not known it to not be online, and I've been here in California for over 10 years. Um, so it's really smooth. You first register. You can register here at this link. Um, and then once you have that registration, you, you go online and complete the certification information. Both certifications will require you to upload some documents. Um, so for the small business certification, they're going to ask you for uh, you know, your tax returns and uh, ownership paperwork. Um, for the DVBE, um, they're going to ask you for that information. Well, they won't, actually won't ask you for your tax returns because the size doesn't matter for that certification. But they're going to ask you for proof of company ownership and then proof that that um, individual is a disabled veteran. Uh, is a yeah, disabled veteran. So, and then there are videos. Um, it's something we can help you with, step by step. It's it's uh, very smooth. But if you want to come in for an appointment, we can walk you through it. Um, but you can also, um, they have uh, training here, on-demand videos that you can just pull up, and they, it also walks you through the registration and certification process. So what makes you eligible as a small business for, um, for the state of California is that you're independently owned and operated. So again, you're not a subsidiary of a large entity. Um, that your principal office is located in California, that the owners live in California, um, owners or officers. And then for the size, it's um, together. So if you do have affiliates, it's OK as long as they're small too. And together, um, you have 100 or fewer employees and less than 15 million in average annual revenue, averaged over the last three years. And then if you're a manufacturer, they don't actually um, have the dollar threshold, it's just the 100 or fewer employees. So the benefits are, the state actually has a great program. They have a 25% goal for all of their contracts. And they, as far as I know, since I've been here, has, they have always met that goal, exceeded that goal. Um, one way they are able to do that is that they have this SB DVBE option. So what that is, is, is if a purchase is between 5000 and 250000 and it's, it doesn't include construction, but everything else it does, um, then instead of having to formally go out for bid, they can, their buyers can actually just get uh, three quotes from either small businesses or disabled veteran businesses certified, um, and then award it to one of those companies. So it really is a time saver. It encourages the buyers to look at the certified firms because otherwise, over a certain threshold, they'd have to bid that out. Um, and that's a lot more work than just calling, you know, getting quotes from, calling or emailing a, a few companies. Um, so that's a really great way that they've been able to help them meet that goal. They also have a 5% bid preference um, for small businesses. Uh, so if you're a certified, firm and you're bidding on a contract that is typically those contracts that are low bid, um, then if you're just slightly higher than the lowest bidder, but you're certified and that lowest bidder isn't certified, they recalculate it, give you that 5% uh, preference, which could then make you the lowest bidder and you would get the contract. And then the other benefit, um, you're listed in their database, which is widely used by other local agencies. Um, a lot of the local agencies that don't have their own certification will recognize the state certification. And they may even, they, a lot of them will go as far as searching the database when they do have an informal procurement, but they want to award it to a certified firm. 
they'll search the state's database to, to find some folks to contact. And, and when you say bidders, normally we're quoting mm -hmm. to bidders. And right. We're not the bidder. Yeah. So the bid preference would only be if you were bidding directly with the state. Yeah, it doesn't, um, this one doesn't carry over to who they're using, this specific small business certification. The city's is different. We'll talk about that, yeah. So it's all online, very easy. Um, we talked about that, S super smooth. So if, if you qualify, I would, I would definitely recommend getting this certification because it's not gonna take you very long at all. Okay, so for the DVB certification, the eligibility requirements are 51% owned by one or more service-disabled veterans, and then 51% controlled by one or more disabled veterans. And it, it's a little bit of a caveat because they don't have to be the same disabled veteran. And they do that predominantly because there have been disabled veterans that, um, where they own the business, but they become, like, they, they no longer can control the business because of their service-connected disability. So they recognize it that that can come into effect and they still want that company to be certified as a DVBE. Um, the owners must reside in California and then uh, this one is you have to have the US service-connected disability of 10% or more. So that's different than the federal um, standard which is a 0% disability rating. So they're a little more stricter on, on the disability rating. And then your home office has to be in uh, the US. So the benefits are, um, it's recognized by all the state agencies um, and, they actually, and, and the primes, and there's actually a 3% goal. So they want the, the primes on every contract to have 3% of it go to DVB certified firms. There used to be a good faith effort where they could get out of meeting that goal. Um, I wanna say it was five years ago, the state did away with it. They said no more good faith effort. If it's on the contract, you have to do it. And the only reason it would not be included in the contract is if that buyer and that agency did due diligence to determine that there really weren't any certified DVBEs that could work on that project because of the scope of work. So they would look in the database, if they didn't see a firm that fit that scope, then they would take that out of the requirement for the prime. And you're listed in that database, which again is, is widely used um, for, with local business, local uh, government agencies, um, the, you know, the port, the, uh, the county recognizes this, the district recognizes a lot of them recognize uh, the state certifications. And it's that same online application. So it's, uh, you register as a supplier and then you certify um, as a DVBE within that, within your profile. Okay, third one is Metro. Um, this one is, is really quick um, because uh, there, so it's Metro, they're the Los Angeles Transportation Authority. Um, we recognize it because they are one of the DBE um, certifiers in the state, and we're not too far <laughs> from LA. So some, there, occasionally we've had some LA firms come down. So we recognize their DBE certification, but you wouldn't ever go to them to get DBE certified unless you were located in LA County or you're, well, for DBE certification, you'd have to, um, to be located in um, LA County to go through them. But they also have a small business enterprise certification. But they also won't process that unless you're either located in Los Angeles County or you're bidding on something with them. So they're, it's a little bit of a, 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 they just, they don't wanna waste the manpower on certifying everybody in the state. Um, they wanna be selective of the, those that are bidding with them. It, what's, what's unfortunate is they actually do have an online application. Um, versus Caltrans, which is still paper and a bit rudimentary, uh, but they have an online application. It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty smooth, um, but everyone's not, no one's located in LA County, so that doesn't apply here. Okay, the city of San Diego, is anyone certified with the city yet? Yeah? Okay. So the city has a small local business enterprise certification and um, an emerging local business enterprise certification. They're the same application, it just depends on your uh, revenues as to 
which one you would qualify for. Um, so they have income caps that range from, it's actually a really small program, so their thresholds are a lot smaller than the state of California. Um, so they'll have income caps and they, they break companies into five different categories. The smallest one is, um, is goods and services, like just general goods and services, if you supply general goods and services. Then the cap is, I believe it's 2.5 million, so it's much smaller than the state's 15 million. And then it'll go up to five million for industries like general construction. Um, so it's, it's it's a pretty small program. Um, there are what's that? Right. Yeah, they separated into into there's a trucking category, a goods and service category, um, architectural and engineering category, and then a general contracting category. But it all ranges from two two point five is the smallest, and then five million. Um, so it's uh, very, a very small business program, um, which is good for those of us that qualify um, as such, because it, it's not, you know, the, the guys that are doing a lot better than the other guys are um, able, they're not able to compete with the certification. Um, so um, it's an online application, uh, and you do have to register, kind of similar to the state, you have to register as a vendor with them, and then within your profile, you would then access that small business, that SLBE, ELBE certification application. What's um, difference between SLBE and ELBE? It's just your size. So if, if you're half of that income cap threshold for whatever industry you fit into, then you qualify as the ELBE. So it's just half of the, yeah. To be to be eligible for this certification, you have to be located, so your principal place of business has to be located in, within the county of San Diego. Um, and you have your significant employment there. So they're trying, what they're trying to avoid is are companies that say, oh yeah, this is our principal office, but everyone works out of Orange County. Um, so they want, they want to make sure that the business is local. You have to be for-profit, not a broker, independently owned and operated, so similar to, um, to the other certifications. Not a subsidiary, not dominant in your field, which is almost never the case for a small business. Um, and then this one does require some that you are in business for um, 12 consecutive months. They do allow just six months if you're an architect or engineering. And then you have to meet that income cap um, eligibility uh, requirement. Now, there is a one little um, unique twist to the income cap. If you are already certified as a DVBE firm with the state or a micro business with the state, um, you, they will lift those income caps and let you qualify for the certification. So you could be well above, for DVBE, there's actually no income cap. Um, and then for the micro business, it's half of that 15 million. So if you're, what is that, seven and a half, seven and a half million, um, which is much larger than the largest five million income cap normally used for the, this certification. So there's a, a, a way to get around the income cap if you're one of those two certifications. They don't want someone who is um, just you know, selling somebody's products, not actually they're, they're like drop shipping or just brokering or like your pastor. yeah pastors yeah yeah. So, yeah. Okay. so the um, fifth one is that California Public Utilities Commission, and they have an MBE and a WBE certification, um, and. We have, some, we have one person who has gone through the process and had some challenges. Um, it is easier, believe it or not, <laughs> than the DBE certification, uh, because that one is pretty intense, and probably easier than the one you went through uh, because of that extra site visit uh, requirement. Okay, so the benefits are it's free, and so that's one reason why the district recognizes it, because it's free. You don't have to pay to get certified. Um, you are centrally listed in um, their supplier database, which is called the Supplier Clearinghouse. 
Uh, and then the CPUC, um, the district recognizes it, and a lot of other entities recognize it as well, but the California Public Utilities Commission sets goals for all the public utility, uh, all the public utility companies. So if you're interested in doing business with SDG&E or AT&T or any of those publicly regulated um, utilities, uh, they have to meet a 5% women WB equal, 15% MB equal, and then 1.5% TBB equal. So um, that's it's helpful, and they they have to report uh, every year to the CPUC um, on how they're meeting their goal, and if they're not um, meeting the goal, how are they going to fix that from occurring in the future. So there's a list of participating utilities at this link here. And then um, one other kind of nice thing about the certification, if you do already have that DBE certification, or if you're 8A certified, which we'll talk about next, um, those two certifications are harder to get. More, they have stricter eligibility requirements. So they use, uh, they have what's called a comparable agency verification. So you can send in the proof that you're DBE certified or 8A certified, and then it's a much easier, you, you don't have to, sub, I think you only have to submit like a quarter of the documents that you normally would. So it's a faster and easier uh, certification process. And then um, eligibility uh, is, ju it's simple. Um, just 51% owned and controlled by women or minorities. Uh, and there is no size standard and there's no economic. So there's no, you could be as large as you are as long as you're 51% owned and controlled. Um, and then there's no economically disadvantaged um, piece to that. So you don't have to be under any sort of personal net worth threshold like you do for the DBE certification. And then the program is actually essentially outsourced to the supplier clearinghouse. So the CPUC outsources the whole certification program to the supplier clearinghouse. And then lastly, there is one, um, one federal certification that the district recognizes um, because it is very, it's formally processed and it's probably the most difficult certification you'd ever try to get. <laughs> um, so it's known as the 8A um, certification. And it's, it's recognized, if you are 8A, the district recognizes you as a, as a disadvantaged business enterprise, as a DBE, because the eligibility criteria is more strict than, stricter than the um, DBE certification. So we'll talk just briefly about this. And, and this is, again, another certification that we can help you with um, and you might want help with because it is so, uh, it's, it's very detailed and very intense. Um, so the purpose for the federal government was to, um, it's essentially to really help small disadvantaged businesses and to essentially build their capability of working on federal, you know, federal contracts. And they want you to work on larger federal contracts. Um, so it's a nine-year program only. So you get nine years. Um, you don't get to do it again. Uh, it's, it's, there's no way to, to get around that nine years. So once you are an individual that qualifies uh, a business to become 8A um, certified, um, even if you stopped owning that business and started a new business, you still would not be able to get 8A certified again. Um, so they, it's a once, kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and they do that because there are a lot of, of nice benefits that go with the certification. So um, eligibility criteria uh, is that you're, you have to be a small business by the federal size standards, which are a little different than the state. Um, they're, they're based on um, each NAICS code has a size standard, and so each industry code has a size standard, and it's either based on your average annual revenue or your, the number of employees, and it depends on the industry. Um, but for revenue, I think the smallest one is seven million, and then the largest is that construction, which is uh, 33.5 million. Um, so it's, most of our clients are still well under that threshold. Um, but if you're not sure if you're considered small within the federal government, just 
ask us and we can look up your NAICS codes and, and let you know what that size standard is. You do have to be 51% or more owned by US citizens. Um, so that's, that's important. I actually, uh, a woman came to me. Um, she had already completed her application. She just wanted us to review it. And the first thing, which took her a lot of time to put together this application, the first thing I noticed was that she had said no, that she's not a US citizen. I'm like, oh no, are, was that just a mistake? And she's like, no, I've been eligible, I just have never gotten it. I'm like, okay. They're not, it's not, uh, you can't waive that eligibility criteria. So she had to wait until she got her citizenship. So 51% owned um, by one or more US citizens. Um, generating revenue for at least, at least two years. So unlike the DBE certification and all the other ones, with the exception of the cities, um, you have to be generating revenue for two years. There is a way to waive that requirement. Um, there's uh, narratives that you can su supply um, on three different topics uh, to kind of to, uh, prove to them that you're capable and that, and that you know what you're doing. Um, but I still, it's rare to see a company if you don't have at least one year of re generating revenue. I've never seen anyone be successful in waiving that requirement without at least one year. Um, but if you do have one year and, and you're, you think you're ready, um, then uh, you can create narratives to address the three areas. And it's typically, it's all, it's a, tell us about your management capability, tell us about your financial capability to, um, to carry on the large federal, larger federal contracts, um, and um, then your technical capability. So they're really wanting to make sure that the company is indeed ready to, to work on these federal uh, contracts. Does it have just generate the revenue as the sales? It's not that like you have to have the next income. That's a great question. Um, ideally, you want to have a profit uh, because otherwise it will raise a red flag. The, it will raise the red flag that they think that you're not financially capable of bidding on federal contracts. And the reason that is is because uh, you don't get paid up front and sometimes, depending on the type of contract, it can be quite, you might have to carry the cost of that contract for three to four to, you know, hopefully no longer than that, but it, it can happen. So they don't want to put you out of business with the certification. Um, on occasion, and it's really evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, but on occasion, we have had clients where they were almost profitable, but something unique had happened, and they explained that in the narrative, and they had you know, a significant line of credit to help, help them with cash flow issues, um, where they might still approve you. So there, it's not, a, not always a cut and dry with that one. And they might, for the federal, they might pay three or four months, right? You weren't gonna say years, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> God, I hope not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Months, yeah. Did I say years? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. No one would want to do business with the federal government. Um, you do have to be, it's that same 51% owned um, and controlled by socially disadvantaged individuals. Uh, the same eth uh, ethnic groups, however, they do not consider women as presumed socially disadvantaged for this certification. However, you can apply under other, especially if you're in a field that is particularly male dominated. Um, and we have had lots of clients have success in that. But when you apply under other, just like you would with the DBE certification, if you're applying under other, you have to build your case. So you have to um, pr have the pr preponder preponderance of evidence. And so you're, you're writing a narrative explaining why you feel you've been um, discriminated against and uh, on a continual basis and how it's affected you economically and your business economically. And then any proof, which is uh, interesting, um, but any documentation that you can prove, like if you, you know, have um, rejection uh, letters from uh, loans that you've applied for or you know, jobs or things like that. So one, um, one uh, example of that is a client of mine, although he shouldn't have had to have applied under other, um, because he, he was um, Maori, which is the native um, 
the native uh, tribe in New Zealand. Um, so in my opinion, he should have been considered Pacific Islander, um, but they didn't see it that way because that wasn't on the list. <laughs> so he had to apply under other, but what the proof that he included in his preponderance of evidence was he was kept you know, he worked in the construction field and he was kept as, he was paid as a laborer but doing foreman work for like two to three years. And he had, you know, documentation of that, the pay stubs, and he had emails where it was clearly indicating that he was doing higher level work. And so that was his preponderance of evidence. Okay. And then 51% owned and controlled by economically disadvantaged individuals. Um, and so this is a lot different than that DBE uh, threshold, which was that 1.32 million. It's actually personal net worth has to be less than 250,000 or 250,000 or less. Again, not including equity in your primary residence or your business assets. Um, and then adjust, you, there's an additional uh, criteria where your adjusted gross income averaged over three years has to be less than 250,000. You're not making a ton of money, um, and then your personal assets no more than four million. So a lot more, more. It's a stricter certification um, than the DPE certification. They don't do site visits, um, which is interesting. You do eventually meet with um, an SBA representative. You're assigned an SBA representative, um, so the, they're there to kind of make sure that somebody else isn't running the company, but um, there's no official site visit to approve your uh, application. So what are the benefits of this certification? Uh, the federal government has a 5% goal um, for small disadvantaged business, and if you're 8A, you're considered to be small disadvantaged business. And then that's pushed on to the primes as well. Can you be a small disadvantaged business and not have any certification? You can be. Um, it's a little interesting. So the small disadvantaged business used to actually be a formal certification. It was very similar to the 8A certification, except the um, personal net worth threshold was 750000 About five years ago, they five they stopped processing the small disadvantaged business certification based on just staffing and budget, and um, they were, SBA just decided to stop processing it. Um, so now you can only self-certify as a small disadvantaged business. So you can't, um, you don't meet the federal goal, um, but if you are bidding as a subcontractor, you can, you, you will then sign essentially a, a certification with that prime, and you'll, um, that you, I am this, I meet the eligibility criteria, and then they can use that to count towards their SDB sure. goal. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it's, it used to be formally processed, very similar to the 8A, but not anymore. So the, the easiest way to be SCB is to qualify for the 8A, and, and you get, a lot more benefit from being 8A certified. There, there aren't any SDB set aside contracts like there are 8A set aside contracts. Um, so that leads me to the next benefit is there are contracts that are just set aside for 8A firms. So you don't really hear the word set aside with local government or the state, um, but because that's a, it's a federal term and a local agencies are like, no, we don't have them. But federal government does, and 8A is one of the categories that can have set-aside contracts. The next benefit is even better. Um, they can actually sole source contracts to 8A firms, up to $4 million or six and a half for um, manufacturing. Um, so that's, that's really where the main benefit is, is that you can be sole source contracts, which uh, isn't, the easiest thing to do, but when you, if you make the connection and the, you've sold the contracting, um, the agency or the contracting officer on your capability of, of doing the work, they don't have to formally procure it. So, and that's a pretty large threshold, up to $4 million, so that would save them a ton of work and a ton of time. 
So it, it really does, a lot of the soul sourcing does happen, um, but it, you do have to make that connection and you have to you know, be very capable as a company to, to have that occur. And then there's additional access to training that the SBA puts on, um, mentor pro and they also have a men an 8A mentor protege program. Um, it's online, and it, I believe the link is going to stay the same, because um, it's certified.sba.gov, it's just the system's going to be replaced onto that link. Um, and then there is a short course on eligibility and the application, which is gonna change, so you might not wanna <laughs> view the application part, but on the eligibility part, if you wanna review that again, um, then that link is there. So in summary, um, what we recommend, there, and we didn't even cover all the, like there are other certifications, such as the one that you guys have. Um, so we always recommend, start with, let's figure out who your target customers are. Um, who do you wanna do business with? And we can help you with that process. Who's buying a lot of what you're selling? Um, is, are they buying it in a way that you can be competitive? Um, so we can help you with that market research. And then once you identify who you really want to target, then you, you know, we help you understand what certifications they recognize and then if you're eligible for any of those certifications. So you know, we've had clients where they get all of these certifications and then you know, they realize, oh, I'm almost never going to bid on a contract that has a DBE goal. Um, it just you know, it depends on the industry that they're in and, and that sort of thing. So, um, you want to make sure that you're getting the ones that are recognized by who you're going after. Make sure you're eligible. So that's, again, uh, you don't want to get into that uh, situation where you've completed everything and then that one thing stops you from being eligible. It's never perfect because there are minute things that can be, that can come up and be interesting. But for the most part, we can help you determine if you're eligible before you go through the process. Um, there may be times where we say, well, we think you'll be eligible for 8A, especially if you're applying under other, because that's, that's a whole, it's kind of a gamble. Um, but for the most part, usually we can, we can determine that you'll be eligible. Uh, obtaining the certification generally takes time, so it is a business decision. You wanna focus on making money, um, so, Targeting is, is the best way to get those. Uh, and then just be patient and understand that a lot of them do take time. The state DV, DVBE and, and small business certifications are processed really quickly, but the other ones like the 8A and the DVE take a lot longer. So just always remember um, that it's, it's not an overnight thing. So if you, know, if you think you're gonna be bidding on a contract that, you know, where the, that certification would be beneficial, you want to get take that processing time into consideration. So if you haven't done so already, if you're not an active client of ours, um, that's the link to our application. Uh, and indicate if you are needing assistance on a certain area, so if you like, I want to look at 8A, just let us know there's a question about what type of um, assistance you'd like. It is free, so take advantage of it. Um, if you've already completed, if you know you're already an active client of ours, um, you can just call and schedule uh, to, to have an appointment with a counselor. And then you're always welcome to attend our, any of our training classes. Um, we have typically about four of our own uh, at our office in National City a, a month, um, and then we try to help advertise other uh, classes as well on our website. And that's the screenshot of our website, and um, the application link would be here. And then the training events are here. We have actually two, if you were to hover over this, um, uh, two would drop down. The first one are our classes hosted on site, uh, or like this class. And then the second one is a community calendar where we try to post networking events and trainings by other agencies and anything relating to government. And then there's my contact information, um, email, phone number. I'm here for any questions. I'll stay till, um, any, till everyone's out. <laughs> uh, but if you, you, know, if you have any question, 
something we can help you with relating to certification or just government contracting in general. So if, you, if you're just getting into it, you're not sure how to get started, how to get registered, how to do the market research, how to find the opportunities. And then once you find opportunities, we can help you understand how to bid on those opportunities. So kind of anything relating to, to government contracting, we can um, assist you in turn. So thank you for coming and uh, I'll be here for questions, we, you do have an evaluation, so if you'd like to fill that out and leave that at your table, I'll collect this.